So our first session is um, we've clustered the presentations into what we think are really meaningful groups, and we, we've invited people from different disciplines to speak alongside each other, which we really hope also will help us to think across disciplines too. So the first session is on mobilities, privacy, and accountability. So I'd like to invite Mark Androvich to come and speak to us. Well, Mark and Chris to come up and speak to us. I, we all know who each other are, so we're not going to spend a lot of time doing introductions. We really want to give people time to speak about their work. Thanks, Sarah. This is going to be an extra special lightning talk, so we're just going to do four minutes. And um, is this the thing? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not seeing the, the visual scribe because I'd be distracted by it, but it looks, it looks great. Um, so <clears throat> what we do in this presentation is take some work that looks at the link between automated facial recognition, which is automated recognition at a distance, and automated forms of response uh, that are articulated to automated forms of recognition. So we're interested in how those two work together in the governance of mobility and the securitization of circulation. Just as a little bit of background, uh, there are a number of historical narratives that fit into this, these forms of governance that are linked to biometrics. Two of them we're gonna highlight. One is uh, what John Torpy in his History of the Passport calls the state's monopolization on the legitimate means of movement. So the role during mercantilism of the state in starting to find ways to govern circulation and movement precisely because of its productivity uh, under conditions of um, trade capitalism uh, and at the same time the conditions of risk that are associated with increasing forms of mobility and transport. Historically, prior to the photograph, this form of uh, identification was descriptive and narrative. The second uh, historical trend that we're tapping into is the rise of the face through the agency of the photograph as a means of linking a credential or a form of identification to a body. Uh, and what we're seeing in the current conjunction is ways in which um, the uh, technological forms of recognition and automation uh, of uh, Im linking the image to an identity enable a reconfiguration of the forms of securitization of circulation uh, and the monitoring of, of mobility. And we use some terms that we borrow from cultural geographers, the notion of embordering uh, or the thickening of the border, the, the switch of the border from um, uh, uh, just a crossing point, an edge, to the border is volume, something that you enter into and you're tracked continuously as, as you move through it. We think this re reconfiguration is shaped in part by some of the forms of monitoring and tracking that are pioneered in virtual space. Uh, and what's been interesting is to see how some of those through forms of automation are migrating into physical space. So the ability to uh, create new forms of checkpoints, uh, new forms of credentialing as you move through physical space. Uh, and that's something that we saw during the course of the pandemic that Chris will talk a little bit about, the use of facial recognition uh, for these forms of monitoring and tracking, but you also see it in a range of uh, areas that are emerging around the development of facial recognition technologies. It becomes more powerful and less expensive. So you may have seen some of the coverage of uh, retail outlets in the UK and in Australia that create their own databases to manage who can come in and who can't. Uh, and there are some discourses that are, in, that are probably worth tracking to see what happens in places like the United States when the body becomes a border. Uh, thank you. The, um, uh, the, uh, Chuck Johnson, a kind of right-wing figure in the US, uh, was working with the founder of Clearview AI to talk about the possibility of creating a data set of all of the images of folks who are, have been arrested or found to be undocumented um, uh, immigrants in the US, and then giving that as an app to border patrol people who can actually circulate throughout the country and use that to identify um, <clears throat> folks who are uh, assumed to be undocumented. So there you see this kind of thickening of the border where the border becomes everywhere. Uh, and there are a range of different locations in which we can see the deployment 
of facial recognition technology as a form of bordering. And uh, I won't speak to all of those, but it's worth considering all of the examples from the gig economy to the different venues that are using facial recognition, not just to control access, but to sort and striate access, uh, to, to create different levels of access and different forms of uh, treatment. And I will now turn over to Chris. Great, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, so in order to uh, explore the role uh, being played by FaceRec in securing mobility, we've attended a whole bunch of Australian and international uh, tech trade shows. We basically, we wanted to learn about how the face is being marketed and imagined here. And we discovered several key themes related to their use in the management and control of circulation. These are frictionlessness, operational temporality, uh, and the automated modulation of the physical environment. So the uh, promise of enhanced convenience, often paired with uh, security, was a recurring theme here. And convenience, in turn, was repeatedly framed in terms of seamlessness, which is quite difficult to say. Uh, the ability to interact and to transact speedily and with the minimum use of any credentials other than one's own face. So as the CEO of a company called Fine Biometrics put it to us, friction has become the new F word. As a smooth user experience has taken priority, bringing with it better customer and employee satisfaction with lower administrative costs. And since seamlessness refers to passive forms of data collection, this shifts control over the authentication process away from individuals and towards the institutions that control uh, the sensing infrastructure. This automated seamlessness relies on smart cameras and other sensors to capture biometric data at a distance and match it to stored databases. And these promises of uh, frictionlessness and seamlessness deployed by the promoters of FaceRec uh, were aligned with an emphasis on acceleration, the goal of subtracting surplus seconds from routine interactions and transactions. So at the Biometrics Institute Congress, for example, one participant described the ability of FaceRec to accelerate the operational temporality of identity detection and verification. And this term uh, applies more broadly to the potential of the technology in the workplace, in retail outlets, in security and transport applications. So the idea is there would be no more waiting in checkout lines and no more swiping IDs or transit cards or passports or so on and so forth. <clears throat> but, this uh, like seamless operationalization of facial recognition relies upon the construction of physical infrastructures for sorting flows of both people and information in real time. And since the ability to sort the movements of individuals in real time depends upon the deployment of automated infrastructure, face recs frequently being paired with existing access systems such as automatic doors, elevators, turnstiles, and so forth. The uh, corollary of seamless circulation is the deployment of efficient tools for sorting populations in order to discriminate between those permitted access and those who are considered too dangerous or risky or otherwise undesirable, people you might not want in your shop. The paradox then that securing seamlessness relies upon the proliferation and expansion of borders and checkpoints. Some jurisdictions, for example, as Mark mentioned, have been creating photo databases of undocumented immigrants uh, to identify using facial recognition wherever they might be. Uh, the use of these and similar technologies for passive uh, at a distance identification reinscribes borders wherever they're deployed. And so this is the somewhat uneasy and uncertain condition that we unearthed in our analysis. Facial recognition is being imagined as a way of enabling greater seamlessness, efficiency, and customizability, while also pushing far-reaching risk management and securitization into our daily lives. But these capacities are predicated upon the massive extension of the border into the interstices of the most banal elements of the everyday, and indeed into the very contours of the face itself, with all the capacity for bans, uh, prohibitions, and indeed violence that the border generates and organizes. Thank you. <laughs>